Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will first be trying to split this expression up into two separate fractions. And then, since we will encounter certain expressions like this within our denominator, we will have to employ this technique called a rationalization. All right? But we will go more into that later. So for now, let us first analyze what we have over here. Now, a quick glance might point us to the fact that, in fact, our numerator is in fact the sum of the, these two expressions within my denominator. So I could rewrite it like this. I have a plus b over a times b, which means I could split it apart into two such fractions like this. All right. And notice that a and a are common here, so I could write it as 1 over b. b and b are common here, so I could write it as 1 over a. Alright, so let us try to apply it into this question over here. So therefore, my given expression can now be written as 1 over 2 plus root 3. The other one being 1 over 2 root 3 plus root 5. Alright, so now that we have achieved this splitting, we now need to observe that we have what we call cert expressions, which are basically expressions involving square roots within our denominator. Alright, so this over here is undesirable. We usually tend to deal with certs only in our numerator. Okay, so we want to avoid this form altogether. So how do we get rid of these square roots? Now let us observe the form of our denominator, which are both of the form a plus b. Right. To get rid of the square roots, we are likely going to change it to the form of a square and b square, right? Okay. Now, whether we should put a plus and minus here depends on what kind of identities we have. And thankfully, we know this really common one over here, which would result in the difference of squares. Therefore, that tells us that if our denominators are of the form a plus b, I just need to introduce a minus b to the numerator such that my denominator would then become a squared minus b squared. Alright, so for example, my first one will be of the form 2 minus root 3 over 2 squared minus root 3 whole thing squared. The same applies to the fraction on my right. I would have 2 root 3 minus root 5 over 2 root 3 squared minus root 5 squared. Okay, so... For these two numerators, there's no way for me to currently evaluate them. But for my denominators, there are a few things we can do, right? 2 squared is just 4. Root 3 squared is just going to be 3. And then for the fraction on my right, this again, 2 times root 3 squared. 2 squared is 4. Root 3 squared is 3. 4 times 3 gives us 12. Root 5 squared is just going to be 5. All right? So since my denominator here is going to be 1, this fraction will actually just be 2 minus root 3. Whereas the 1 on my right hand side, since my denominator is going to be 7, I will split my numerator up into two separate fractions like this. Both of which are over 7. Alright, so now it is time for us to look at which terms are similar. So 2 is the only one that's a whole number here. Now, looking at root 3, I have negative root 3 over here, plus 2 over 7 of a root 3. So, minus 1 plus 2 over 7 gives us negative 5 over 7, right? Therefore, I would have minus 5 root 3 over 7. Now, root 5 over 7 is one of its kind, and therefore, it will be left alone in this manner. So, if we look at the form that we have right now as our answer, notice that our denominators are all clear of our certain expressions. It means we have no need to rationalize them any further. Alright, and therefore, this is as simplified as our answer can get. So, from the top, first recognize that this is actually just the sum of these two expressions, which means that we could split this original expression into two separate fractions. But now, at this stage is when we realize that we have to start to rationalize both of our denominators, seeing as there are square roots 
within them. So by rationalizing, we are mostly going to convert them into a form of a squared minus b squared, right? Rationale being we're trying to get rid of the square roots. So we just need to multiply both fractions accordingly with the form of a minus b, right? Then afterwards, we just have to simplify step by step, and therefore we get our final answer as shown over here. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.